This show is proudly brought to you by these lovely people. Hey there, lovely NPR enthusiasts. It's the first BNPR show for 2022. Let's get the show going. The highlights are Grease Pencil Essential Tips, Gelato Roboto, Stylish, and Not a Font, and Watch a Fighter Pilot Dancing. Welcome to the BNPR show, a celebration of stylized and non photoreal rendering. As usual, we've gathered a feast of artworks for your eyes and hearts. Please enjoy. Tutorial time. First, Phantom Flame by BBBN19. It's called the Phantom Flame because only the area outside the flame is visible, much like burning alcohol. Here's the summary on how to make it. First, we make a flame mask. It's done by multiplying the color ramps on the X and Y of the UV map. Then, add a 3D noise texture with distortion with vector add and multiply for animation later. Next, the noise texture is blended using linear light blend mode with the flame mask. To make the shading, mix a transparent and an emission shader and use the output from the linear light node as the factor. Set the alpha blend mode to alpha blend so that the shading looks closer to a flame. Now for the secret sauce. For the emission falloff effect, add a color ramp with a black and white gradient. Add a minimum node with 0.999 and add a logarithm node with the first input of 0.9995, then link the minimum output to the second input. Then multiply the log output with the color ramp to fix the shading problem. 
To recolor the phantom flame, use the noise texture's color as the input to a color ramp. To make the mesh deform over time, add a subdiv modifier. Add a vertex group to the top part of the flame. Then, use the vertex group as part of the mesh that deforms in the displace modifier with a cloud texture. To animate the deformation, add an empty and set the displace coordinates to the empty. Then animate the empty using a driver. And just like that, you get a phantom flame. Bakery Shop, Grease Pencil Basics by Kevin Dram. Let's return to the fundamentals, but this time we're making a bakery shop. There is a lot shown in the tutorial, but we still think there are a few key points you should know. Tip one, turn on these viewport overlays to help drawing be more intuitive. The grid, 3D cursor, and canvas. Tip number two, you have to master the two most important settings the stroke placement, and the drawing plane. You can adjust the angle of the drawing plane using the 3D cursor rotation parameter. Tip three, please change the view transform from filmic to standard. In fact, you should do this for all NPR artwork. Tip number four, a common workflow using the drawing plane. Tab into edit mode to place the 3D cursor to the selected vert. Then change the drawing plane to the direction you want, then draw. Tip number five, set the camera view early in the process to make drawing easier from the camera view. This is also true with projection painting. Tip six, sometimes your stroke or fill will appear behind other grease pencil layers. Make sure the appropriate stroke depth order type is selected, which can be either 2D layers or 3D locations. You can arrange the draw order using the right-click menu or the special menu in edit mode. Tip seven, you can scale any selected stroke in edit mode using Alt-S. Tip eight, you can further edit primitive grease pencil objects in edit mode. For example, an arch window can be made from a circle then combined with a rectangle shape. Tip number nine, Toggle Auto Merge in Draw Mode to automatically join the endpoint of every stroke. Tip 10. Stroke and Fill can be in a Material Mode, which follows the material colors, or in Vertex Color Mode, which will be in the color you set for the vertex. Use the Material Mode if you want to change the material color for many objects in one go. Use the Vertex Color Mode when you want to draw in any color and do not want to worry about the material color. And lastly, tip 11. To change colors of any stroke and fill, you can either change the color in the material if the material mode is used, or use the tint tool, or use the vertex paint mode. And there you have it, all the key points to aid you in your grease pencil journey. Painterly Brushworks by Tausif. Tausif mentions a few color topics that we want to elaborate further here. First, doing color study. This is the process of picking color from paintings and seeing their relationship in the color selector. Even for expert color pickers, this exercise is important to discover new color relationships. You'll find new colors that match each other nicely. Some colors you thought that may not work may actually work in certain cases. The more you do color studies, the richer your color palette will be. Second, the relationship of warm light and cool shadows. Most shadows are cool because they have shades. Well, all joking aside, not all shadows are created equal. Some glow with subsurface scattering and some reflect from the surrounding objects. Your aim is NPR but you also want some relatability from the real world. Thus, mix in your colors with all nature has to provide and include them using your brushwork. And you know, if you want to master color instantly, insert shameless plug here, please grab our soul stirring digital color mastery ebook. You'll master color very fast. A number of university students commented that the ebook is the best color education they have ever had. Period. Ah, now for the animations. 
Love theme from Knucklehead Junction. The transition in the animation is superb. The grease pencil work blends very well with the 3D objects. Also, it uses mostly shadeless shading. We'll watch that on repeat. Gelato Robato by Motif Studios. It has beautiful colors and designs. Robots duke it out in a cyberpunk frenzy over a mysterious package. Watch the video to find out what's in the package. Sci-Fi Pilot by Ginger Bear. This whole music video is an experiment. The dancing is motion captured and put on by a fighter pilot character. In the helmet, is she a robot or someone gorgeous? You decide. Please do visit the show notes. We always leave a lot of goodies in there. Plus, this show is made possible by these kind-hearted people. Please thank them kindly. And before we go, one final question. Did you notice that most of the interesting artworks have really good color palettes? 